Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to, it's gonna be a long video. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about different ways you can purchase fragrances, ways that I purchase fragrances, talk about reward points, different places that offer some really great uh, just perks, and how you can save some money on fragrance and when you should pay full price or the benefits of paying full price if that's something that you like to do. So this is going to be a buying advice fragrance video. Yeah, let's get into it. Now, a lot of this um, information I'm going to be talking to you about is common knowledge. I'm not going to sit here and try to unlock the secrets of buying perfume. If you have cash or have credit, you can buy products. So this isn't like how to sneak around and get things. I'm also going to talk to you guys about gray market. I'm going to talk to you guys about paying full retail price and the importance of supporting local businesses and small businesses. This is going to be a long video and in some previous videos I might have talked about some of this stuff but I wanted it to be in one long video. We're well, not long but one video rather than you guys having to surf around my other videos and try to find where I talked about this or this because this topic has been very requested. Now I'm going to be breaking up this video into three parts. The first part is going to be how to use reward points or what stores have great reward points to purchase fragrances. And then the second part is going to be discount stores, places I've made purchases and how that works, gray market, if you wanted to understand the legitimacy and authenticity of if you can trust certain websites in regards to purchasing discounted fragrances. And the last, I'm gonna be talking about the importance of if you are going to be paying full price, when and where to pay full price, and maybe ways to save money doing that as well. Again, this is a lot of this information is common knowledge, but a lot of this information has also been highly requested from me. So yeah, let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to talk about is reward points. And I'm just using that term reward points because there's a lot of different ways that you can earn cash back, money back, um, you can earn percentages off. I'm going to talk about how to do that and which stores I think have the best. Now I'm going to be talking about USA, United States based stores. I don't have any experience when it comes down to stores outside of the States. So if anyone has any experience with fantastic reward points programs or stores that have great loyalty membership rewards, please let me know in the comment section below so people can check it out if they don't live in the States. Now the biggest thing when you can get these types of points is when you sign up for credit cards or you sign up for loyalty programs. Alta has it, Sephora has it, major department stores have this. And in a lot of cases, small retailers can have it too. Think of it like if you go to a local coffee shop, you get a little card and you purchase 10 coffees, your 11th is free. I always like to look for stores or businesses that have great reward points. And if I can shop there, that's where I'll shop. The one that I utilize the most is actually Ulta. Now I've mentioned I used to work at Ulta. I used to be a manager at Ulta, but before I worked at Ulta, for years I utilized their rewards program. Their loyalty program is free. You do not have to have a credit card. You do not have to spend any money to be a part of their loyalty program. And their points are like dollars off. Like every hundred points, it's $3 off and you could buy something for $3 and one cent and all you will owe Ulta is all you will owe Ulta is a penny. That was a tongue twister. The reason why I like Ulta's reward points is that is where you can really buy a lot of stuff that you might get at the grocery store. They have cotton balls, they have uh, drugstore beauty items, you can get your hair done, you can get um, you know, a lot of shampoos, conditioners, deodorant. If there is a product that you might get at say like your local grocery store, your local drugstore, I would say get it at Ulta because you will start to accrue these points very quickly. If you do not have a hairstylist, I would recommend getting haircuts, blowouts, your hair done at Ulta. That's how I actually started to accrue a lot of my points. Ulta stylist, at least the stylist that I used to work with and the stylist that I used to get my hair done were very talented. I trusted them with my hair. I followed one hairstylist from Ulta to actually her own. She started working at a different uh, hair salon 
and she was amazing. She was featured in Allure magazine. Everybody there was just super talented. And so obviously the salon's gonna depend on where you live. And I'm not telling you to leave your stylist. But I am saying if you are on the hunt for a stylist or if you are moving and relocating to an area and you need to find somebody to do your hair, check out Ulta. You get reward points for getting your hair done and you can also use those reward points for hair as well. I used to wait until there was like five times the points on your hair. I'd go get $300 worth of my hair done. And by the time I left, I would have $125 in reward points that I would then buy a bottle of perfume with when I left. So it was like, get my hair done, get a bottle of perfume free. I highly recommend if you shop from Ulta to utilize their app and to constantly look to see what offers they have because they have offers five times the points for this and two times the points for this and buy this and get $17 worth of points. You do kind of have to keep an eye on it, but if you are shopping at Ulta, if this is a place where you purchase some of your things, sign up for their loyalty program, it's free, and you will be surprised how fast you can accrue points. That is where I've gotten the past two years a lot of my designer perfumes because I would buy things and then I, you know, every few months I would have like 17,000 points, 20,000 points, and that's like six, $700 worth of stuff. And then I would have a beautiful little haul of about $1,000 worth of fragrance after my employee discount that I spent $0 on. I'm not telling you to spend unnecessary money to get points. I'm not telling you to try and buy useless makeup, useless skincare product, useless salon services to rack up the points. But if you're gonna buy deodorant, if you're gonna buy cotton balls, if you're gonna buy Q-tips, if you're gonna buy shampoo, if Ulta has that brand, buy it at Ulta and get your points. I like Ulta's because it is money for money and there is literally no um, exclusions when it comes down to spending your points. You can spend it on prestige, you can spend it on higher end, you can use them online, you can lose them on salon services. And that's a great way if you are going to buy these types of products to buy it at this store to accrue these reward points and you can use it on fragrance. And I've used it on a lot of stuff. I've used it on Chanel, Dior, Terry Mugler. <laughs> I have a lot of products. So definitely recommend checking that out if you want to shop from Ulta and if you're looking for a great store that has great reward points. The other shop that a lot of people shop at is Sephora. Now Sephora's Rewards Bazaar for me is a little bit harder to manage, but I do really like that they have a lot of opportunities that you can do too. So what I mean by that is Ulta is dollar for dollar, you know, you can have a thousand dollars of reward points. Sephora is more kind of special experiences that you pay for. So you have the smaller reward points where you get deluxe size samples, you get a birthday gift, which is really nice. But at the same time, the higher up that you get, you can buy trips, you can buy special experiences. I think Penrose two or three years ago, which is like an indie fragrance company that Ulta has, you were, could actually go to the Penrose um, studio or lab or wherever it was, and create a custom scent. And I think that they may have sold it at Sephora. I don't remember the exact specifications, but I think it was like 20,000 points. And at the time I had 20,000 points. I considered it, but those things sell out so fast. Now with Sephora, their reward bazaar sells out really quickly. So you really have to sign up for the newsletter, keep on top of it, check often. And if there's something that you want, get it. Like Ulta, you accrue these points through purchases. There might be special events around Mother's Day or Black Friday where you might get uh, more points if you buy this or this or this. And Ulta has, not Ulta, I'm sorry, Sephora has uh, two times a year if you're a VIB, uh, VIB Rouge or whatever the lower one is. I don't remember exactly how it works. The first tier, the second tier, and then the ultra tier. 
uh, you get like 10% off, 15% off, 20% off your entire purchase. I'm not sure if it includes clearance, but I mean, I would buy my SK2, I would buy my Le Mer. This is when I would buy a lot of my, you know, higher end fragrances like Tom Ford, and you would get 20% off of these purchases. So I wait until these sales happen to get my Le Mer, to get my SK2, to get some of these higher end perfumes, because it's really hard to find 20% off and then you can accrue these points and then you could get say maybe a trip or a limited edition bag or a special palette that was drawn on by one of these makeup artists. And another thing that, all, um, I don't know why I was talking so much about Ulta, another thing that Sephora has is I believe if you're a VIB Rouge, you can take a specific number of points and turn it into cash. So. I had enough points for I think two or three hundred dollars and then I bought a few Tom Ford fragrances or I bought something else, I forget what I bought, and I was able to turn those points into cash. Now you have to be I think a, a, one of the second or third tier in order to do that, so you have to spend like twelve hundred dollars a year. And it is a lot of money to spend, especially if it's beauty, especially if it's luxury items that are not necessities, that is a lot of money to spend a year. So it is harder to get to that point, but if you're buying two or three bottles of fragrance, you can get up there pretty quickly if that's within your budget. Now I do have, I am VIB Rouge and I am Diamond with Alta. I do spend a lot of money at these places, but I will say the most important thing is to remember is don't spend unnecessary money to gather points, then it's defeating the purpose. If you spend $500 to get $100 worth of points on stuff you don't need, you might as well have just spent the $100 on the one thing that you want and save the $500. That's why I kind of prefer Ulta's points. And again, years before I worked at Ulta, I was utilizing this because I needed to get my hair done. I get blowouts all the time. I get, you know, special deep conditioning services. Uh, they are one of the only places that have the type of color in my hair that I like. I obviously need to buy deodorant. I'm not, you know, that's something that I use. I obviously use through cotton products. I use shampoo. They carry my brand of shampoo. So I would go there to get all those things because I was going to be purchasing them anyway. And then I would accrue these points. Or, you know, I like to buy Le Mer. I like to buy SK2. If I wasn't purchasing from my specific SA, I'm going to buy here because then these are products I'm going to be purchasing anyway, and then I accrue these points. The important thing to remember is don't purchase just to purchase, but if you're going to make these purchases, these are two stores that have really nice rewards where you can get something back for what you purchase. Making purchases at Sephora will get you access to that you know, 10 to 15 to 20% off two times a year, and Ulta, you get these fantastic royalty points that, you know, basically are exchanged for real dollar amounts. So those are the two stores that have great reward programs. Also, there are different things that'll come up. People will tell you to get this credit card, sign up for this store card. I never recommend to do that because those types of credit cards, you're always going to forget about. So you might have like a credit card at the end of the month and you're like, okay, I owe $250. I did really good. But you might forget about the $50 purchase on your Neiman's card the $20 purchase on your Macy's card, the $100 purchase on your Ulta card, and at the end of the month, you're like, oh my gosh, I, instead of having $250 worth of credit debt that I was gonna pay off, now I have $1,500 when you had all these cards come in again and you weren't quite paying attention to it. This video is not telling you to sign up for unnecessary credit cards, so please do not take that away. Those cards are a great way to utilize and get points faster, but at the end of the day, I do not think they're worth it. I I don't, so I'm not gonna sit here and tell you to do that. You're gonna go to these stores, these people are gonna tell you, this is a great way, you're gonna earn double the points, you're gonna get 20% off, you're gonna do this, but at the end of the day, it's not worth it, personally. So I think the best way is to sign up for loyalty programs that don't cost anything to sign up for, that don't require any credit check, uh, that just require like your phone number or your email address, and then that way you can accrue the points that way and then you don't have an unnecessary credit card floating around. Now one thing I will say is a lot of these programs, Ulta, Sephora, require phone numbers, emails, um, they require your address. This is perfectly normal and if you are uncomfortable with doing that, let me make a recommendation to you. 
get a Google number, get a Google phone number, use that as a phone number, a number that you can remember because you're gonna have to type it in and have that be your number and get a email address that you just use for these places. That way your main email address isn't out there and your phone number isn't out there. You do not have to give your address. You do not have to do that. You do not have to do that to sign up for any of these programs. I do not know if it's going to be necessary for returns and exchanges. Every store is different. But when it comes down to signing up for some of these loyalty programs like Alta or Sephora, your phone number and email should suffice. Do not let these companies demand these of you. They're going to be like, well, you get coupons. Well, if you sign up, generally those coupons are online too. You're going to get them through your email. Oh, you're going to miss out on this. Well, you know, I need to have this mailer where you get this. It's like, well, it's three fifty. You know, it's unnecessary. I don't think you need to give your address. I don't think you need to give your real phone number. And I don't think you need to give your real address. Sign up for one of those like Google phone numbers and one of those fake um, addresses that you get like spam to or where you get like newsletters to so that way you're not giving out like your business email or your personal email or your actual phone number. That's a recommendation I do if privacy is really important to you. So those are the stores and just general overview in regards to reward points. Again, I talked about two major stores. Those are the ones I have the most experience with, but sometimes local stores or other department stores or smaller chain stores will have reward programs. The biggest issue I have is, is to make sure that they're free to sign up and also making sure that they just, you get a general good bang for your buck when you get those reward points. And again, I prefer Ulta just because it's not that I work there. I just like to let you guys know that I work there so you don't think they didn't tell me about this video. They didn't ask me to do this video. I just like the fact that you could get $3 in points, spend $3.01 and only owe them a penny. There's no like you have to spend $50 to get this $25 off with other stores have. Like, hey, you've got $50 in cash to spend at our store, but you have to spend $150 to get that. I hate that. I like that there's no minimum. You could spend $2.99 and you won't have two pennies left, but you won't have not spent anything. So if you want more information on both of these reward programs, I recommend going to their websites to check them out. I'll definitely learn a lot more. So now we're going to get into discount retailers and we're going to talk specifically about brick and mortar stores and online retailers. And I'm going to group these together. The reason why I'm going to group these together is because generally how these companies gain these products that they sell for a discounted price works the same. And I'm going to talk to you guys about that and then I'm going to let you know which retailers I shop from that I've had fantastic experiences with. I've talked about gray market before in the past. I've talked about how it works. I'm going to be going back to me working at Ulta because this is actually my job was to kind of be the middleman between store and gray market so i can kind of let you know how that works so what happens is is stores let's say like macy's um they obviously do not own chanel they don't own dior they are licensed resellers for these higher end brands and these higher end brands or brands in general have standards they have standards they also have seasons so seasonally there might be this makeup palette for Christmas or this makeup palette for Valentine's Day. And it might only be available because it's a limited time for that amount of time. But what happens with those extra stock that's not sold? Or what happens when a product is rebranded or rebottled? Or, you know, it's a new season, so they're refreshing their entire lineup. Well, those old products, one of two things happens, actually one of three things happens, and it completely depends on the relationship with reseller to person who is selling the product. So let's say, and I'm not saying this company, I'm just throwing out this name, let's say Dior and Macy's. So Dior sells their fragrances at Macy's. I'm not saying they do, I'm just saying they could. And they have a limited edition fragrance, and then that limited edition time is up, maybe it's six months. And so they're like, okay, you have say X number of bottles. Now Dior might have a specific relationship with Macy's where they allow them to put them on clearance. And so 
this store Macy's will then have this clearance rack where they can put a specifically allowed discount on this fragrance. That's where sometimes you will see major retailers having discounted products of brands that normally don't offer discounts. And that is contractual. It might only be Macy's that's allowed to do it, Sears or JC Pennings. I'm not saying that they sell fragrances, I'm just throwing out names. Dillard's or anything like that is not allowed to put it on clearance. Only Macy's has that contract. Normally what happens though, is there's a destroy and field or return to vendor. So that was my job as operations at Ulta on top of setting up the entire store every single week, going in at two to three o'clock in the morning and working till two or three o'clock in the afternoon, resetting a store, resetting the aisles and doing full inventory. I loved what I did. So you would get say, let's say at Ulta, let's say Kylie Cosmetics. Kylie Cosmetics says, well, we're done with our holiday collection. So you're going to send it to our distribution center. So what you do is you have a list and you take all the old stock and you put it in a box and you send it to their warehouse. Or you have say Too Faced does it, or you have say, you know, Exuvians or Lancome. Some people you would send to uh, Ulta's distribution center or some places you would send it to that particular company's distribution center. Now, what do they do with this old stock? Well, sometimes we would be told to damage products. So we would pull these products and we would have to destroy them in a store. Now, last year, when the pandemic first came out, there was an Ulta employee on TikTok and this went viral when she was destroying products. Now, a lot of people got mad at Ulta for that, but the thing is, is when you return a beauty item in the United States, it cannot be resold if it's in any way, if the label is damaged, or if you even for a second consider that it was used. I had a rule of thumb that if the person could take it home and open the product, I would not let it back on my shelf. That's how I ran my store operations wide. It was like, nope, we're damaging that out. It is heartbreaking. <laughs> but it was for the safety of um, my customers. Now, there were some products that were completely sealed that the company says, say this so-and-so lipstick company wants all these sealed lipsticks destroyed. That's the contract that this company had with Ulta. You cannot put this on clearance. We do not have a distribution center. You have to destroy it. And I would sit there and I would destroy tens of thousand dollars worth of lipstick because that was my job and it was heartbreaking. It's the relationship between this company and this company. I believe Burberry got into a lot of trouble or a lot of people thought it was really freaking horrible that they were destroying a lot of luxury goods that were out of fashion. It's just for the, the look of the brand. You know, the, this brand doesn't wanna be found in discount retailers. You can only buy it full price from here. It's the brand's relationship with the resellers. But we're not talking about the destroyed products. We're talking about those products that got sent back to those distribution centers. Now this next part is just my speculation on how this industry works. Obviously different resellers, different warehouses, it goes different ways. But generally what happens is those products are inspected and they're resold at a huge discount to places like TJ Maxx, Ross, Marshalls, Home Decor, and online resellers, gray markets. Now, most of the time, 90% of the time, you're gonna be purchasing authentic products that are not that old, especially if you're looking at, let's look at perfume that sells quickly. Brands and names that just people want to buy because it's super popular, it's a fast moving ticket item. And so they're constantly getting these products in. So, you know, maybe Sauvage, maybe Blue de Chanel, maybe, Fahrenheit, maybe a lot of these products that people are really buying a lot of. Those generally aren't gonna be sitting in warehouses for a super long period of time because they're fast movers. But a lot of times when people purchase these products from these warehouses, they're not just picking and choosing, they're buying lots. So they might get a few fragrances that are, I would say, not so popular. They might get this fragrance that doesn't move so quickly. And so they kind of sit a little bit longer. The authenticity of the products at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and a lot, not all, but a lot of these discount retailers is generally authentic and the products generally aren't more than a year old. Now that doesn't mean that every products 
less than a year old and then it doesn't mean that there aren't opportunities for fakes to come into the mix but generally these companies rely specifically on reputation and word of mouth so they're going to be very picky about who they purchase from the authenticity of where they purchase from and the quality of where they purchase from because a lot of these online retailers if there's a batch of fragrances that are fake, then there's going to be a huge word of mouth and they're going to lose a lot of business. They're going to lose more money than what they would gain by selling fakes. I'm not saying that fakes do not happen and it is completely acceptable to scrutinize any purchase that you make that is not from an authorized retailer like Dillard's, Macy's, Neiman Marcus, or specific boutiques that have authorized reselling of these products. So when you are purchasing a discounted fragrance from any of these places, you have every right to scrutinize and be unsure if this is fake because there's always a chance something could have slipped through the cracks. There's always a chance. That's why it's really important to research, read reviews, look at these companies return policies, see how their customer service is in regards to when fakes happen and how they handle it and the efficiency and you know, how quickly do they handle it? Is it something that you're gonna be put in PayPal jail for like three months until you get your money back? Do you have to ship the bottle back at your at your choice or at your, you know, at your price? There's a lot of different things you have to look at. So it's really important to do research, especially if you're making a purchase, I would say $50 or more. Now the places that I've purchased from that I've had absolutely no problems and everything I've gotten um, that is authentic is FragranceNet, Fragrance X, and Max Aroma. I do a lot of shopping at Max Aroma. Specifically, I did a lot of stuff at Fragrance X um, and Fragrance Net in the past, but I find that I prefer the selection at Max Aroma. I also like their weekly deals that they do. Now, just because I've had great experiences with those three places doesn't mean that if anyone had a bad experience, they're a liar and I'm right, or I'm a liar and they're wrong you have to do your due diligence. That's the most important thing when it comes down to making or taking the risk of getting a discount is taking the risks of maybe possibly not getting something authentic or maybe not getting something that's super fresh and has been sitting in a hot stuffy warehouse for years. You do not know. That's why a lot of people prefer to pay full retail price. There's other reasons why I would pay full retail price and we'll get into that in a minute. Now, another way that you can get discounts on fragrances is purchasing directly from people. Depop, Z, Mercari, Poshmark, eBay, and there's also Facebook groups and other groups on different forums where you can do shops, swaps, and sell yourself. Whenever I make purchases from people, I always prefer to use PayPal and I like to be some type of transactional invoice. Now, a lot of times people will do Facebook friend, uh, PayPal friends and family. I, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing illegitimate. There's nothing scammy about people demanding that. I will only do that though with people that I know have a good rapport, a good record, a good history with people in that specific forum. Like they've sold 20 or 30 bottles and there's been no issues then I'll be like, okay. Or if it's somebody I've specifically purchased from in the past with no issues. Just because if something happens, if it gets lost in transit, if it gets damaged, if something happens, I know that I'm more likely covered and protected. It doesn't mean that the person is scamming, asking for Facebook friends and family. I just prefer myself to have that layer of protection. But do you understand that when you are purchasing these types of fragrances, you are taking a risk. But generally, the risk you're taking is because you're getting a tremendous deal. Like I got $1,000 worth of perfume and I spent $150 on it. You know, that is a risk I took, but I was like, the reward would be worth it if it works out. And it worked out. So just always do your diligence. See if you can ask the moderators. Do a search within that forum, within that group, to see if that seller has a good um, history, a good track record with customers. 
and then take it from there. If you feel comfortable doing paying this way, Venmoing, cash shopping, however, you're the one that's taking the risk because you're ultimately the one that's gonna be without money, without product or with a fake product. So always do as much research as possible. I prefer to do PayPal invoice, you know, through a business transaction, I will always pay any business fees or any fees accustomed to it. So say it's a $100 purchase and it costs like $5 for an additional percentage to do it, I will always be the one to pay that additional percentage. I don't mind doing it, it's just me. It doesn't mean anyone's a scammer if they only do PayPal friends and family or if they only do Venmo, if they only do Cash App. A lot of people are comfortable with how they've been doing business. I've sold 50 bottles through Venmo. I've had no issues. It's the way I want to do it. I don't like PayPal for this reason. I don't like Cash App for this reason. I understand people saying this is the way I do business. If you don't like it, obviously somebody else will purchase my product. So I'm not saying that those people are scamming you. I'm not saying that those people aren't legitimate. I just prefer if something goes wrong in the transaction, we're both covered. So that's a recommendation that I do. Whenever you're purchasing from any of these places, try and have any type of receipt and purchase in a way that if anything happens, albeit lost in transit, damaged, scammer, fake, they might be selling it in good faith thinking it's real and just isn't. Maybe they bought a bottle off of a friend and they didn't smell as nice as they remembered because it wasn't right so they're selling a bottle that they think is legitimate you know a lot of things happen so just try and make the most of every dollar that you have but also protect yourself as much as possible so if you're going to be buying from Depop, Tracy, anything like that you're going to have a receipt a lot of times those uh, companies will require those items to be authentic but if you're purchasing directly from someone, having some sort of receipt or invoice will help you. And most of the time, I wouldn't be so worried about a fake. I'd be more worried about it being lost or damaged in transit. And then it might be kind of, you're buying a $200 bottle of perfume and the insurance is only covering $50 and they don't cover perfume anyway. So you guys are out of luck. So that's why I like to have some type of receipt or transaction or invoice just personally. Just again an extra layer of protection for you i know this video is long thank you guys for sitting through it so far hi thank you hi hi so the last thing we're going to talk about is paying full price now obviously paying full price at an authorized reseller is the only way you truly will know if you have something authentic and i'm not saying you have to buy this product at dillard's or at the creed boutique but sometimes creed will sell their products to smaller local perfume boutiques. You know, you have a bunch in New York, you have some peppered all over the United States. You can buy from any of those places. And in fact, if you can buy from a smaller perfume shop, I think that's great because you're supporting perfumery, you're supporting local business, you're supporting artistry. It's just exciting to me. So I always like to purchase from local shops. Shops I've purchased from that are not local to me or used to be local to me are Osme Perfumery, I bought a bunch of scent from Lucky Scent. I wish I could go to their scent bar. Um, Perfumology, and I buy a bunch of stuff actually from Beverly Hills Perfumery. And there's a variety of different other places. Some places are out of business. Um, sometimes there's some great deals um, on these websites. They might be lowering their stock, so they might be selling something uh, cheaper. So you might get you know discounts on Francis Cajon. You might get discounts on Creed. You might get discounts on Raja because they are liquidating their stock to move more stuff in. I'm not saying that these particular stores do that, but I've seen on websites of other perfume boutiques where they're like, okay, we're gonna be selling these, so we're going to be discounting these, and you still will be supporting local perfumery, you'll be getting a discount. There's a lot of good things that happen that way. I just always like to support local and the artist as much as possible, because supporting with your money is the best way to see what you wanna see in the industry. Um, rather than paying a discount. Now I do buy a lot of stuff gray market. I rarely will pay full price for something just because I like to utilize coupons and discounts and opportunity. So if you're going to spend full price, the biggest thing I can do is if it's from a perfumer, sign up for newsletters. A lot of times they will have 10% off your first purchase or they themselves will have amazing reward points. One of my favorite reward points to utilize is House of Matriarch spritzes. I purchased, I think the first three bottles um, 
I purchased from Nordstrom. <laughs> and then after that, I bought everything from Christy directly from her, her website. And I have a lot of spritzes. And so you purchase things and you can get 20% off to 50% off. And so not only does she have great sales all the time, I've been able to purchase things and using spritzes and getting 50% off. She has a fantastic and robust reward program for her clients and her you know, customers. And I utilize that. And there's nothing wrong with utilizing that because you are utilizing an asset that this person is providing, but you're also supporting them directly. So they are probably getting more money than if you were to buy it from a local perfume shop at a discount than paying full price here. Like it's a win-win for everybody. So if a local shop or if a perfumer or if a niche or luxury house has a newsletter, sign up for it. Again, use that email that I told you to get for those loyalty programs so you're not getting spam on your main email. Have that be like your, your business newsletter place where you check for coupons like maybe once a week or twice a month or something. And they'll say 10% off or we're having this on sale. Or sometimes you'll be able to learn about an upcoming sale sooner than they're announced on their social media. So you might know, I really wanna buy this perfume, it's gonna be on sale. I'm gonna wait two weeks when it's on sale here. And then you're not buying it and then realizing in two weeks that it was on sale. I think signing up for newsletters is a great way to get coupons to support directly these smaller houses, these luxury houses, these niche houses, and at the same time you can save some money. So that's a huge thing that a lot of people know about, but maybe you don't sign up for it. I think it's worth signing up for it, especially if you have a burner email for all your spam to go to. Just send it there and just check on it like every few weeks. Now, the reason why I think it's really important to support fragrance and paying full price is because when you do that, you're voting with your dollar with what you want to see within the community. And I'm gonna use designer fragrances as an example because it's the easiest uh, example I can use, analogy. You guys know I'm not articulate. If you sat through this entire video so far, thank you for dealing with my scratchy voice and horrible vocabulary. So a lot of people complain about that all designer fragrances or most designer fragrances, especially new releases, smell the same. It smells generic. I've smelled it before. I want to smell something new. The problem is, is we're so accustomed to buying things disc discount, buying things on gray market, buying things secondhand and saving a lot of money. And there is nothing wrong with that, that we forget to realize that what these houses want to see is a return on investment. They want to see what sells. And what happens is, is a lot of times they will rarely take risks in regards to creating a new composition, doing something daring and unique and risky if they don't think that they're going to get a lot of money back. So if they put a million dollars in, they probably want to see at least $20 million in return before they decide to do that again, because it's also an opportunity cost. They might only have the budget or they might only have the schedule to release one or two fragrances a year. Why are they going to release, release something risky that might only get $10 million back? when they can release something generic that everyone's gonna buy anyway, when they can get $50 million back. So it's really important if you have the means to do it, to when, it, when you can, voting with your dollars with what you wanna see. There's a reason why everything kind of smells the same currently within the designer market, because that's what sells. These are compositions that people like to smell, that are complimentary, that are attractive, that are easy to wear, that are crowd pleasers, that follow this kind of same composition for men's fragrances and same composition for women's fragrances. They sell, people talk about it, people love it, people purchase it. I think that that's fantastic. And I think that wanting to smell a way that's gonna be attractive, that's gonna be crowd, crowd pleasing, that's gonna be complimentary is wonderful. But there's zero room for ingenuity and creativity because it is such a risk. So it's important to vote with your dollars if you see something new and exciting that you really want to be embraced and expanded upon, specifically in the beauty world. And I think that's really important. A lot of people, I'll use concealers for example. Concealers were 
obviously is necessary, but nobody really cared so much about concealers until the Shape Tape came out. When other companies saw the amount of money and hype and just lust for this concealer, that's when everyone started going concealer crazy. And people like concealers, but people didn't like concealers until Shape Tape. And that's what the industry wants to see. You're not just gonna, you know, if a new unique composition comes out designer wise and you love it, if you have the means and capability to pay full price for it, do it. Because if that becomes a commercial success, other brands are gonna say, wow, what did they do? What's that composition? What is that note? And they're gonna start being more daring and risky because they're gonna see that it is, uh, return on investment. It's worth it. There's a lot of money and hype here. That's what these houses are. These are businesses. These businesses need to make money. And so I'm not telling you to go into debt. I'm not telling you to buy something that you do not like. Do not do that. If you do not like it, do not buy it. If you can save a few bucks on it, do it. But if you have the capability to vote with your dollars, do that whenever you can. That's a smart you know, decision for you to make. That's why I bought full price, obviously with my employee discount, Memoir d'une Odeur from Gucci. I was so excited. Firstly, I love that fragrance. I was gonna buy it anyway. Did I need it that moment? Not really, I probably could have waited, but I knew it was important to buy it because that was a unique take on fragrance in regards to gender within the designer fragrance world. Now that sounds like a construct and it sounds like we're having a political conversation. We're not. But when it comes down to designer houses taking a leap of faith on maybe not making a unisex fragrance, but doing something for everybody that's different and chamomile, I was excited. I was excited to support that. I had the means to support it. I could have bought it later. I could have bought it from TJ Maxx when it came out there in like six months because I knew that's how long it takes to get to those stores. But I decided for me it was important to support this and I like the scent anyway. I'm going to own it anyway. I have the money to do it. I'm going to do it now. Now again, I'm not telling you to buy unnecessary, I'm making unnecessary purchases. If you prefer to buy discount, obviously buy discount, save yourself some money. But I just wanted to talk to you guys about the pros of purchasing full price because there are reasons to purchase full price. It is supporting what you want to see in the market. It's knowing completely for a matter of fact that it's going to be authentic. And if you want to save some money, here are some tips. The biggest tip on top of rewards programs that I talked about earlier is actually utilizing and understanding when major sales happen within these companies. And there are two giant holidays within the retail world where you will save money on beauty items. Not just any items, beauty items. Because a lot of times skincare, makeup, and fragrance is excluded from a lot of sales. So the two major holidays, two major retail holidays, the biggest retail holidays ever for these sales is obviously Christmas time and Mother's Day. Huge sales around Mother's Day when it comes down to beauty items. You would be surprised. My store, any retail store I worked at, because I worked at a few retail stores doing operations, Mother's Day was bigger than Christmas in a lot of cases. Not in regards to foot traffic, but marketing. Good Lord the amount of marketing that goes around Mother's Day. And a lot of people, and Valentine's Day too, but not nearly as much as Mother's Day. That's when you buy gifts for your mom. And so what gifts are marketed to women, skincare, beauty, makeup, and fragrance. So you will get a lot of sales and discounts that include beauty items. So you want this bottle of Frederick Mall that's $390 and you wanna save 25%, wait until Mother's Day. That is when you will save a lot more money on fragrance and you will be buying it full retail price because you're buying from a department store. When I say full to full retail price, I'm not talking about gray market. You will get a discount. You will buy it full price. A lot of times there's a lot of perks that come with this too. Certain companies will give you gift cards or you'll get a lot of really nice gifts with purchase 
there's a lot of stuff that happens around these times, a lot of gifts and a lot of sales and a lot of perks that happen around these times when it comes down to purchasing. They want your money at these times. They pour millions of dollars, millions of dollars into marketing and they want a return on investment and they know that people are looking for a deal and this is around the time where they loosen their belt and they get a little bit too chummy and they release their discounts upon the land. So that's a great time to make bigger fragrance purchases, to hold off and wait. If you want to buy, and again, owning, uh, supporting with your dollar, showing the business you want these types of fragrances, this is a great time to do it because a lot of times you're gonna be getting huge discounts, but you're still supporting full retail price. So these companies, these big designer houses, these higher end near designer house level niche and luxury houses are gonna see that their retailers are moving a lot of product. And these are the types of fragrances that are being sold but you're also saving a lot of money too. That's, I do a lot. You'll see there's specific times of year where I have huge fragrance hauls where you're like, she's got 50 bottles. She spent thousands of dollars. I, I did not spend thousands of dollars, maybe 8,000, but I've saved more than I spent because I'm utilizing my reward points because in some places you can use reward points and also on clearance items, you can use reward points. So you get this fragrance that's 20% off and you use your reward points at the specific time and you got an additional 10% off. And so you're, you're, and you're voting with your dollars. I mean, like, if you think about all the things I've talked about in this video, if you have the ability to wait and to make your purchases smartly, you're able to compound a lot of these things and spend way less money. Or you might be able to buy a $300 bottle of perfume and only be $10 out of pocket. There are ways that you can do this. The important thing is, is to be um, knowledgeable, to understand how things work, to also understand what your limits are. If you have a budget for a $50 for a bottle of perfume and you have a $300 bottle that's $100, that $100 bottle, even though it's $200 off, is still over your budget. I'm not gonna recommend you make that purchase. But what I will say is you might be able to get a really nice bottle of perfume that was normally $150 for $50. I'm not telling you to spend over your budget. I am saying that try and save, try and be mindful, try and make smart decisions so that when a deal does come up, you have an arsenal of things at your disposal to make smart decisions and maybe get a tremendous deal which is why I really wanted to talk to you guys about this video. I really wanted to go like full ham into it, have it be a super long video because these are tools that I've utilized and these are tricks that I've utilized to help me make some of the purchases. I'm not telling you to make decisions out of your budget. I'm not telling you to buy more things in order to get reward points. That's silly because say you have $200, you spend $200 to get $100 off a $300 bottle of perfume, you have $200 of things you don't need, and then you don't have the money for this, it would have been cheaper for you not to spend anything and you could have bought it full price. Like, I'm not telling you to spend more money than necessary, but if you have $100 to spend, hopefully this video will tell you how to utilize and get the most out of that $100, because then maybe you could get a $300 perfume, dollar bottle of perfume for $100 by being patient, utilizing reward points, being smart about where you make the purchases and the like. And that's what this video is about. This video is about advice on buying purchase, uh, purchasing fragrances and also the importance of, in specific cases, paying full retail price and also supporting the artistry that you wanna see in the world because I have no problem paying full price if it's to support a local business, if it's to support a brand, a house that I love and more power to them if they give me a coupon so I can spend more money there because that's what I usually end up doing. That does not mean that's what you should do. That's what I do because usually if my budget's $300, if I can get two or three bottles of uh, dollars or two or three bottles of perfume for $300 rather than one, I'm going to utilize the coupon and do it that way. Um, I will utilize any coupon, any discount, anything at my disposal. There's nothing wrong with that. But I kind of wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about the importance of making smart decisions, how to make smart decisions, and also to give you guys some tips and tricks. 
Well, I didn't, didn't mention it at the beginning of the video, but I will link below every website where I look for coupons. Um, there's cash back websites like, you know, Rakuten and different things that you can utilize. Honey, please understand any link below in regards to a fragrance house, in regards to money back coupon, none of those are affiliate links. And I just wanted you guys to know that. So that way you guys don't think that I'm trying to get money from you. I do have affiliate links. There are a few affiliate programs I'm a part of, Magic Links, um, Amazon, and sometimes you'll see some pepper jam peppered in there. Those are affiliate links. Or anytime I say use my code, generally those are either um, affiliate or not. I will let you know anytime those are not affiliate, but every single one of the links below under the resource tab is not an affiliate link. I don't want you guys to think that. But these are places that I purchase from, businesses that I love to support, and brands that I think are fantastic but also have fantastic reward programs. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know this video was super long and I know that I talked in circles, in tangents, and gave you guys a lot of very common knowledge, but I figured I would sit down and make this a super long video as some sort of resource. If you're the type of person that likes these types of videos, then maybe this was fun for you to sit through, or maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Also, I want to let you guys know if there is any business that I've mentioned that I have a good relationship with, if you've had a bad relationship with in any capacity with customer service, quality, authenticity, please in the comment section below, let me know what you guys think and let other people know what you guys think. Not too many people watch these videos, but if you can even stop one person or give somebody some alternative information in regards to any of these brands or these businesses, I would love to have this be more of a resource. So that means more than just my opinion and my experience. I'm just one person just because I had a good experience with somebody doesn't mean somebody else did. I think it's really important to hear both sides to any story. So do not feel at all like I'm gonna suppress those comments. I never do, unless people are really cringy. <laughs> but for the most part, please feel free to let um, anybody know your experience is good or bad with any of these companies, any of these brands, or any of these discount programs. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for sitting through this super long video if you've sat through the whole thing. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.